in the first place. Can someone tell me how do we understand the, the departed ones? The loud ones mean uh, uh, departed ones, see, right? They are not anymore living with us. Now, in our understanding, these loud ones have already passed away. So what do you think? Would you think that you really want to communicate with, communicate with them? You want to communicate with them. I just want them to, be, to know that they are in the of it. I, still, you want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think there are some cultural uh, events attached to uh, this uh, notion. Uh, it is important to, as it is important or not important to talk to these people. So what would be the Pali term for those who passed away? We have a whiteboard, we can use that for some interpretations, uh, explanations. Anyone has uh, come across the Pali term for the departed ones? And what is it? Any thoughts? Okay, so that would be nice to uh, write down something. The Pali word for the departed one is Peta. Peters. So Peter or Peters. Right? So now these loud ones, they have they have already passed away. So we call them as uh, Peters. I don't know whether the, the whiteboard can be seen by all. Maybe some of you can come over here. If you would like, you can stay there. Uh, so, uh, so we have to understand pathos at the beginning because these loud ones are pathos already. Uh, and uh, uh, who is a peta? Peta is someone who passed away. Uh, we call, uh, so we all become pathos when we die. So there are two layers of pathos. One is uh, we all become uh, uh, pathos. Uh, I would say like this, we all become pathos after uh, the death. And the second layer is some continue to continue to become uh, different types of pathos. We call them uh, uh, kuppipasa pathos. Kuppipasa Peters. It's a different category. We call hungry goes. Huh? So, uh, Peter is a generic term for all of us when we pass away. But uh, there are people, when they pass away, they are not going to be reborn in a better place. So, they will be reborn uh, in one of the Peta worlds. There are four Peta worlds. This is one of the Peta worlds. Uh, I would say second one is this. First one is uh, Vanta Sika. Uh, first, first one is Vanta Sika. Second one is Kupipasa. Third one is Nijama Tanhika. Fourth one is Pardatupa Jeevi. So there are four uh, pay towels. Now, uh, as we understand, we all become pathers when we pass away, and then we are reborn uh, in a better place. This means when we pass away, others call us pathers, but we are not pathers. These living beings call us pathers, but we are. We might not be pathers. Maybe once we pass away, we might be uh, reborn as a human, Deva, maybe uh, Brahma. But people who don't know about us, they call us Pathers, right? So it's okay, doesn't matter which other people call us, right? But uh, if you happen to be uh, reborn in the next life as one of these Pathers, uh, that could be a little bit concerning issue, especially the first second and third. So, kuppipasa means uh, 
Ku means uh, hunger, Vipasa means thirst. So they are uh, struggling with hunger and thirst. Right? So now the problem is if our loved ones become one of these, one of these uh, four, then they want good karmas to go to a better place. At that point, they cannot approach people who they don't know. So what they do is what you do. Let's say when you need some money, you are approaching. Let's say you have five people. You are approaching those people to borrow some money. Can you approach the people who you don't know? You can, but you have to then pay some interest for that. So in the same way, Peters, when, when Peters are in struggle, they are approaching those of them who they know. That's a simple argument. Right? Now this is what many people misunderstand, ah, now I can talk to them. Because they are coming to get something out of you. Now I can talk to them. Right? They need some help. Uh, on one, another uh, angle, uh, if our relatives become one of the peters and then they come in a dream, uh, it shows that they are not in a good place. This is what we normally know in the text, the early suttas. So other than that, how we can communicate with them? Now they have passed away. Uh, I will give you a certain hypothesis. The, the best thing is when somebody passed away, our loved one, our wish needs to be, may they be reborn in a better place, may they be able to travel in the sansara in a better way and finally attain Nippana. And we don't want to communicate, communicate with them, we don't want to make a mess out of their sansaric life. So this is the uh, main background of the uh, situation, what will happen to someone and how we need to understand these uh, peters. Right. Uh, so uh, let's think about uh, other categories. One tasika means those peters who throw up and then they consume that thing. One tasika. And uh, kupipasa means uh, peters uh, who uh, cannot eat and drink, although they have things around them. Let's say they. Uh, touch the water, the water become blood, the good food becomes stale food. They are good food, others can go and eat, but they cannot. So they are kuppipasa. These are the typical uh, hungry ghost. And uh, paradattupajivi, this is an interesting category. This category is an interesting category, the fourth category. Paradattupajivi peters are those who are needing help, but once they get the good karmas, merits, then they are going to be reborn in a better place. Uh, they are very different than these one, first, second, uh, third type of peter. So if our relatives, actually this is what we assume when you go and give dana, what you are doing? When you give dana, you are thinking about any relative who passed away who are uh, expecting good karmas. So they must be, most probably be reborn in this Paradattupajivi. Let me write in uh, large font size. Paradattupajivi. Petaval. All these are Petaval. Vantasika Petaval, Nijjamatanika Petaval, Kuppipasa Petaval, Paradattupajivi Petaval. Para means others. Datta means given. Upajivi means subsist. Petas who are going to subsist on, depend on other people's good karmas. If our relative, uh, for whatever the reason, is going to be reborn in here, then we could do dana. But these petas, they are having a hard time for whatever the bad karmas they have done before they pass away. I think I could share with you an interesting uh, sutta, Vachagotta uh, sutta in the Anguttara Nikaya. Is it okay if I uh, erase? Now, 
Now this sutta called Vachagotta Sutta, there are many Vachagotta Suttas. This one in Anguttara Nikaya, I can uh, look, look for the number later. In this sutta, one Brahmin called Vachagotta, he approached the Buddha and asked the Buddha, Bhante, we are giving dana to the departed ones, uh, we are giving dana to the monks, but our purpose is to give good karmas to the departed ones who passed away in the name of uh, uh, their next life. Uh, so are these good karmas really going to them? Then the Buddha said, it depends on the place where they are reborn. So there are uh, three places which if your relative is reborn and cannot get these good karmas, there is only one place that uh, this particular relative can get the good karma if that relative is reborn. So these are places, uh, what do you call, the peta cannot get the good karma. Let's say uh, if the relative is reborn as a human again, let's say your mother, father, whoever is going to be reborn as a human again, then the Buddha said, because he is a human, she is a human, that your relative cannot uh, get the good karmas. Why is it when you are a human, you don't need good karmas at that point for become a human, but you need good karmas. But especially the good karmas that the uh, relatives are giving to you in past life, they are not mainly coming to you because you are a human. But the Buddha says something interesting at the end, what will happen to those good karmas. The second place where your relative cannot get good karma is if you happen to be reborn as a deva. I would say uh, uh, six main devas and uh, 20 brahma deva. Brahma also Deva. Uh, deva uh, someone will become a Deva out of lot of good karma. So initially that person does not need good karma. Now you may have lot of questions. Uh, why we give good karma to so Deva at the end? Ask, save those questions <laughs> for q and I'm trying to make you curious now. And then the third place is not a good place. I would say animal, animal kingdom. If your relative is reborn as an animal, that animal cannot get good karmas until the animal is going to pass away. Say for instance, uh, if the animal, if your relative is going to be a dog. You always remember immediate relatives who passed away and at the same time, those beings that you imagine who were in your life in the past life. Just people generate transference of memories. One very good example is King Bimbisa. King Bimbisa. What happened to him? Did he have a successful communication with the Petas? Very successful or was it aborted in the same place? What happened to him? He is the one who donated the first temple. What is the name of the first temple? What was the first temple that was donated to Buddha? So, King Bimbisara offered this place to the Buddha. In the same night, he happened to see certain sounds. He actually particularly heard four letters. Do, Sir, Na, So. Do, Sir, So. He heard it. 
but he doesn't know what these letters <coughs> stand for. And he was very happy by offering the first uh, police Bihar. And uh, that time, he heard. So immediately he went to see the booth in the morning. He said, I heard these four party books. And then the Buddha explained four party stanzas, which I cannot remember now. Do one stanza, sir, na, so. And then the Buddha said, these are your friends in one of the lives. No long time. They have been suffering a lot. But they know this, your good car. So they, they really thought you would give good karmas at the end of the temple offering. But you did not. This happens to some people. Right? When they come and do the dana, they are happy and then they think about their life, they do. It happens, right? It's like when you happen to take some good food. Right? You only feel happy, you eat it and you don't think about others who are around you. And then you can eat at them. If that happens, the living beings around you are not happy, right? They are not happy too, right? How come you did not share with me? It was with mouth watering, right? You didn't share with us. Too bad. <laughs> so you say, they pay us, any pay us, uh, residual pay us, think in the same way. So then the Buddha suggested something. Okay, I'll tell you something. That these painters will double, triple their request to more if you don't do anything. <laughs> it will be quadruple. So you gotta do something. So how did you see them? They were naked. Okay. They start by offering robes. Robes. That means clothes. Painters initially need clothing. Because because of the bad comes, they are, we also uh, born as naked beings. But because of our uh, human river, we were supported by beings around us. But painters are reborn as naked beings, they will never be supported by anybody. So he offered, then they left. They did not appear in the train. This is a communication. Can loved ones uh, communicate with us after they have passed away? Wonderful example. But for what? To tell they are suffering. Please help. This is one very good example which I can give you an example. Second example is Araha Sariput. One of the mothers of Arahant Sāriputya became a peta. One of the mothers, Sansa. And then she appeared. Then uh, she was requesting good karma. Think about Arahant Sāriputya's mother became a uh, peta. Peti. Then what will happen to our peta? <laughs> the second disciple of the Buddha. And then what he did was he uh, offered, he was talking to his own devotees. And then offered kuti and some other ropes to other ones, including Arahan Mokalana, Arahan Mahakapina, and some other ones. So uh, the mother did not. But an interesting story in the same line is Arahan Puttapada story. Very interesting story. I think most of my students who are attending my classes know this story, but I normally share this with regard to uh, Arahan Puttapada. One day, when Arahan Pottapada was uh, resting in the evening, uh, one peta appeared in front of him. Normally, the, the strong beings like Buddha and these uh, noble disciples don't see this, you know, these petas. Uh, we, have, we will talk about that later. Why some people see the uh, petas, why some others don't see them. Then, uh, that peta told uh, Recognize himself, he said, but they are not someone you don't know. I am your brother. I am a peta. Not even me, your mother and father also became petas in this life. They are also living with me. So, mother, father, brother of Arahan Pokhapa became petas. Now, what do you think about us? This is a little bit alarming situation. Mm -hmm. Arahant's family became Petas. 
very happy to ask what can I do for you? See? But they really don't have clothing. So can you do something for us? Then he did the same thing, like right? He offered some robes to some other monks. But the interesting thing is that Peta again appeared in a couple of days and then said, uh, Yes, thank you for the uh, clothings. Now we need water. Then Tarahan got about the uh, stretch out his arms. So look, there's a river. Why don't you go and uh, drink water? We can go there, but when we go there, try to touch, take the water. That water will become blood. You cannot be. Because of the power comes. And this happens to some human beings too, right? All the others are enjoying something, but when they touch, everything will be a mess. It was right. Everybody else is enjoying that kind of thing. But when that person is going there, it's going to be a really bad experience, terrible experience. Why is it? Something connected to maybe a past life. Then he said, okay, then tomorrow uh, he could find some devotees, he could find some filters, water filters. At that time, the monks used that because uh, otherwise they think that they are uh, consuming some tiny filters in the water. So then, uh, uh, Peta did not appear for a couple of days. Again, he reacted. And then he said, thank you for the water thing, uh, water filters. Uh, but now uh, you don't have a place to stay. This is an interesting thing, very interesting area about the pages. Even in the, about the pages, some pages are very privileged. They are called Vimana pages. Vimana pages. Who is a Vimana page? These painters, when they travel, they can bring their mansion to the place where they are going. Uh, interesting. If you have a mobile home brand, you can bring it. But how can you bring your home? Let's say you are traveling somewhere. But Vimana painters, they own the house, mansion. They can bring it to wherever they want. They are not like uh, typical houses, but uh, probably imaginary places, but they can still carry. But many painters, many normal painters, they don't even have places to stay. Like some humans. Right? They are privileged in our place. So now, Arahat Pottapatha's brother said, uh, we, I with my, with our father, father, we don't have a place to stay. Then, uh, next, on the next day, Arahat Pottapatha approached uh, uh, some devotees said, Can we make some putties for some other monks? So they said, Okay, we will do that. And then they did it a couple of days. Uh, so he did that. Then again, Peta, uh, Brother Peta, he reacted uh, by thanking uh, for making the putties and we got the houses. Peta houses. Maybe he was able to uh, get a minimal level of. Uh, what you call miniature Vimana okay. miniature, right? Level of uh, house in the Peta world. Then the request that he is asking is a little bit interesting. He said, one day when we are uh, walking, there are pebbles, they prick our feet. <laughs> Very interesting. So, can you do something? Because, uh, you know, Petas now uh, in Buddhism, there are certain things about Petas. One thing is the Peta sleeping position. We call it Peta Seya. In Buddhism, we talk about couple sleeping positions. One is the lion posture, like the Buddha. Buddha sleeps as like a lion, right side. Uh, but Petas, they cannot sleep like that because they have they only have a skeleton. So they cannot sleep on the right or the left. They can only sleep on their back. We call him, uh, what do you call, uh, Peta Buddha Sehya. That means Petas always sleep on the back, which is the good position for us to wear. Because if you sleep on the side, you get some muscle pain. If you sleep on the back, it's good, good for the body. Peta sleeping there. So now this Peta, this 
uh, whining, complaining about the pimples. That means they might be walking on the ground in their own way. So uh, he asked, can you do something for us? Then Arhan Kottapana uh, found out some uh, devotees asking uh, to offer some footwear. Maybe a uh, certain footwear to some other things. Then the beta vanished, disappeared, <laughs> did not react. In the interesting story, in the beta bhakta, Arhan Kottapana. So this is another place where we understand our loved ones, brother, mother, father, uh, they communicated, but not giving a good indication about their next life. So all the stories we saw about the painters, our loved ones as painters, and how they communicated, our uh, Arahant, uh, Arahants and certain individuals, uh, uh, they all appear to be uh, situations where they suffer. So, uh, if any Peta, uh, if any family member in the form of Peta uh, happened to communicate with anybody in the suttas, uh, we understand that they want to tell their suffering and they want uh, others, their loved ones, to help them. This is what we normally see in the sutta text. But now, as time goes by, especially in the Tibet Buddhism, and they talk about the uh, Barbu stage, and the, the Tibet being is like in a kind of a uh, in between state for all nine days, which early Buddhism denies. Early Buddhism says once even you become a beta in the next life. You are in a uh, in between life. You are in more order. You might question it is a good life or bad life, but once you die, that means you are in more. So they will talk about certain communication, but in the early Buddhist texts, uh, we only see the communication happens in the form of asking good karmas for the next life. And the next thing to talk about is, do we want to talk to them? We don't want to talk to them because we understand that uh, in Buddhism everything has been changed. That's why we have to believe in Anicca. So, uh, that if they are, how they are going to talk to us? If they are devas, if they are another humans, how they are going to talk to us? So the people who have appeared to talk to us, they are definitely people who are going through certain pain and suffering. So that is the Buddhist, early Buddhist uh, stand. But when it comes to your culture and you have ancestral activities, they are good. But if you happen to talk to the person, which means that you don't believe that person already passed away, that person has not uh, gone through uh, death, that could be a different thing. The best thing to do in regard to uh, the departed ones is that uh, wherever the departed ones are reborn, we are going to be good karmas. Or that we want to communicate. There's no purpose of communicating with them. We are going to continue to be good karmas. In the Thirokunda Sutta, something interesting uh, is mentioned. The Petas, it is the Petas language that we see in the Thirubhutsu. Petas tell, we don't like our relatives, cry, mourn, grieve about our death. That is not important to us. Very interesting. Uh, I think we can show it here. Today we did not set up the laptop. We can read the Thirubhutsu Sutta. At the end of the Thirubhutsu Sutta, it's Petas say, we don't, we don't need. That is not important to us. You good karma stores. You are crying because you can't take it. Because you are looking at the, the uh, what you call the disadvantages you are going to suffer because of our loss. But now we need good karma. Uh, now we need good karma. You may cry, most of we have healed. But uh, in the real sense, if you come to the reality, but the Petas want is you good cards. That's what we want. So uh, that also says that the, the communication that they need is not that they want to communicate to you uh, on a daily, uh, you know, schedule in a daily way. But they want is good cards so that they can report in a better place. So then, how can we help them? That is important. So. 
this in order for this communication to be a very beneficial one, uh, as a transference, what are we supposed to do? We have to give good karmas today. This is the best. How to give good karmas today? Now, now we are going to the dana. Dana said, uh, you might think about what if to become a Vimana Peta. Travel with the mansion, wherever, but still a beta, right? Carry the mansion as a beta. Okay, now we are thinking about how to help out the loved ones. So be bothered by the communication. If you read, ah, that is a good thing to discuss. Our communication in the Buddhist text is we can communicate with the departed one, the loved ones, by helping them out, by giving the that is on the other hand. And we don't want to talk to them like necromancy, you know, what you call black magic, witchcraft, this kind of way. I just they are using them to get things done. What we do is our communication is uh, when somebody passes away, we know that this person passed away, but we still have a way to communicate with them by giving down, giving good comments. That is some communication. And that is uh, beneficial for us and to them. Because we purify our thoughts and they are going to a better place. That is, so then the answer is we can communicate. Now, this is the answer. We can communicate, but not talking, you know, uh, in person this way, but by really helping them for what they need in the world. Now, let's talk about Dana. Dana is what they want. But on our side, this Dana must be a charm. Our part is Chaka, their part is Dhan. Dhan is giving. Everybody gives Dhan, right? Even the politicians. Uh, Isn't it? <laughs> they are starting projects, they are delivering things. Uh, politicians don't give <laughs> everything. That's another issue. But, but everybody is giving Dhan. But we don't know the Algeria motive of these Dhan. Some are money laundering. Some are trying to evade tax system, some are donating, uh, but there are, are no proper records. But uh, that's why the Buddha said, Dana can happen, it's good. It's better than not giving anything. But other part, the donor has to focus on charge away. They have to give Dana with charge. What is charge? By giving up, trying to give up as, mu as much lower as he or she can give up as much closer as he or she can give up. Try to give up as much a uh, moment as much as he or she can give up. That is how that is how we are supposed to give that. That is how we can intensify, multiply our good karmas for the departed ones, our loved ones, so that we can give a lot of good karmas. Otherwise, we merely do that, there are no enough good karmas to pass on. Right? You know, like normal examples, like uh, you have studied some dharma, but you don't have any enough knowledge to practice. That's why I'm not questioning many people why you don't have a practice. Uh, what I call they have not learned enough to practice. That's why I say little knowledge is always dangerous. You pick up a couple of things from each dog, but you don't know how to connect these dots. <laughs> right. <laughs> you are stuck in many places. So, chaka. Chaka means you are going to multiply the good karmas you are making. So, that's how you are creating a very good dhan for the departed ones. So, uh, then there are three types of donors. Call them uh, Dana Dasa, Dana Sahayaka, Dana Pati. Three types of donors. Dana people. Dana Dasa means those people who give lower than how they consume. You know, everybody consumes in certain ways, they eat in a certain way, they uh, enjoy life in certain ways, but when it comes to donations, they give it very, they give it lower than how they uh, 
how they live life. The others still better than somebody who is not giving anything. This person is like the Bilada Pada, the uh, bank called Bilada Pada. Who is Bilada Pada? Bilada Pada. There was a man who thought, I want to give that, but I don't have enough money to give that. So he approached many people. He approached this particular bank. How he gave that? Okay, I don't have a lot of stuff. So he used three fingers. He opened up certain honeycomb and then just slightly. And he opened something else, slightly some key, and he gave. So it's like a bilara means a cat. It's like a cat's bow, the mount of the cat's bow he gave to the other people. He was thinking, ah, you try to criticize me, I'm going to do something really wrong to you, bad to you. So this kind of dana is dana das. You get very uh, scanty, in scanty ways. Dana sahayaka means someone who is giving in the exact way how he or she consoles. Let's say that person eats in a certain way. When he offers, when she offers, he or she only gives uh, in the same way. How he or she eats. But Dana Pati means someone who eats in a certain way, but when it comes to offering, giving, he or she is giving in a very grand way. Let's say uh, it is not the way how he or she normally eats, but when it comes to that, he or she is giving this. So Buddha says, try to become this person one day. One day, not today. <laughs> you might not be able to financially afford, but one day. This is also better for the home. So, in order for us to give a lot, uh, lot of good karmas to the departed ones, we have to become a good uh, recommended uh, diet donor for the departed ones. Right. So, uh, this is how the Buddha said uh, to become a better donor in terms of that, so that we can communicate. Now, the, the other idea about uh, what you call, uh, now you might call spirits, spirits, dead people. Uh, it, it mostly comes from an idea called uh, resurrection. You understand that we talk about uh, when someone passed away and there's a particular day that the person is trying to resurrect in some religious tradition, right? So in Buddhism, we don't believe this side. Because when someone passes away, that person is immediately reborn in another place. Right? So if that same person is trying to preserve it, that means definitely there is a dead spirit mm -hmm. is going on. Okay? In Buddhism, uh, when you passes away, then definitely you are going to be born at the same time. So this is how we understand. So uh, in short, we can communicate with our loved ones, even if they passed away, uh, by giving good karma to them. But, uh, but by not talking to them. And we don't have to talk to them. That is going to be a, uh, an unnecessary thing to talk to uh, the departed ones. And uh, you can find out a lot of information about different tetas and how they approach uh, different beings. Uh, you know, as you can see, Kim uh, Bimsar, Arahan Sarabhutta, and Arahan Bhaktada. You might perhaps wonder how can one become a Vedan? What, what causes someone to become a Vedan? That's an interesting uh, subject. Basically, breaking the five percent. Breaking the five percent. So, killing, stealing, uh, sexual misconduct, lying, and the surrounding. Basically, and then uh, what do you call it? If you look at a broader perspective, you can see a break of the 10 kusadas. These are the right there here, so you will understand. This is the large border way, broad way, how someone can become a beta. Killing, stealing, sexual misconduct. Yeah. Now this is something uh, what do you call an exclusive, exclusive device to speech. 
Yeah, talking about breaking the precepts, um, the story of Agula Mala. Why did, although he's a serial killer, but he still ends up as an arahan? I don't understand that. Agula Mala, I think all of you know Agula Mala's story. Why being a serial killer, he ends up as an arahan? Because he was able to achieve the goal of being in previous life. But for different conditions, he uh, was a part of 
uh, jealous who in his class, you know, his name is Ahinsa, the innocent child, the innocent student, the most innocent student in the class. So other students did not tolerate it. What happened was that they fabricated a lie to the teacher. So they all said to the teacher, they did the uh, divisive speech. They said to the teacher, this Ahil Saka is having a uh, relationship with your wife. You are looking to that. So the teacher got mad without uh, checking that. He said that, okay, every student has to do a tribute before they finish the studies. But you are going to do uh, an early tribute to me. So he wants him to suffer a lot. Then he said this uh, 1,000 uh, uh, yeah, fingers garland. So uh, he did it. So I think it, it, it was something that randomly uh, affected his life his last life. But uh, in order uh, for becoming an Arahant, uh, he, had, he had done all the good karmas before. Yeah. But if he had killed his mother, he would have never become an Arahant. That's why Buddha enjoyed it before. Let's see. So the uh, answer is that uh, he could have been a because of his past good karmas. He fulfilled all the Arahantas uh, in, uh, in his previous life. That's why I'm always telling you, don't judge anybody's dharma journey looking at this or this life. Don't do it. Because we don't know what they have been doing in their previous life. Uh, becoming an Arahant is not a one life journey. It is a journey of many millions, trillions of lives, samsaric life. So uh, the answer is. Uh, but he already achieved the Arahant he already. Yeah, already have certain state of mind that make it in a Can you take the mic and get this? No, sorry. Um, if he already achieved all the paramitas in his previous life... Not achieved, he uh, completed. Not Com achieved. Okay, completed. Yeah. W wouldn't he already exhibit those state of mind that is more stable and whatnot? It did not trigger. The Buddha was the trigger. Until the Buddha came and helped him, uh, none of the good practices did not trigger in his life. How did the Buddha approach him? He said, ah, it's very interesting. Huh? <laughs> Only one finger is remaining. Yeah, I saw a monk, he even cannot run with the rope. <laughs> so he was very happy. Then uh, the Buddha said, uh, then he was told by the Buddha. Stop monk. He said, I have already stopped. You are the one who is running. And he triggered his practice at that time. Before he killed people on the road by, by doing ambuscade in the forest. Nothing appeared. So then, uh, he, because he was the genius, the smartest student in the class, he thought, about, what is this guy talking about? I have stopped, you are running. He is not referring to the normal walking. Then that was the trigger point. And then he could think about something. That is how he became a monk. And then uh, King Kosala was shocked to see. Uh, because Buddha saw that King Kosala, actually he stopped by the temple. Then Buddha asked, where are you going? There is a very uh, bad guy, criminal, or humble man. I'm going to take him down with the special forces. He's going to die from that day, actually, if, if, they, if they went that far. So he said, uh, you have to do this, be happy. I was so shocked. <laughs> so, uh, I think we cannot look at it from our normal understanding. But the proof is that he done his paramitas, but the practice did not bear fruit until he met the Buddha. We think about a lot of criminals sometimes. In their late, just before they pass away, they become good people. It happens. They become extremely disciplined people, better than normal individuals. Never believe. Now I'm not saying that you can become a rascal and a bad guy and become a good guy. Don't take it as a free pass. But what I'm saying is that it happens. So Uncle Ram is a very special incident, a uh, very special example. What happened was his Dharma journey, he had practiced already, but uh, he did not get the right condition uh, to get into the path. And, and we have no problem with his killing because uh, he will become a Sotapa. He had not become a Sotapa at that time. But he had the potential of becoming a Sotapa. 
And another example is Santadi. You take the same example too. Santadi. You know this story? Minister Santadi. Who is this guy? Santadi. Was a minister of the King Kosala's cabinet. So one day, uh, King Kosala asked uh, Santadi, there is a problem in one of the states. Can you go and uh, take care of the state? If you successfully uh, stabilize the problem in that state, there was an insurrection against the king. I would give you a boon. Boon means, you know, at that time, uh, the king can give kind of an immunity, a royal immunity to certain individuals. Then he went in, he successfully stabilized the state. He knew how to deal with the people and he used the forces properly and then he did it properly. So the king said, okay, you can ask anything, I will give it to you. He writes a woman, I am in love, in your haven, I want to see her, be with her. Okay, go for it. Then he used the elephants, old elephant. And then that evening, Buddha and Bhante Anand, they were walking on the same road. Then uh, now Santati, he was drunk. And then now walking on the elephant, riding on the elephant. Then uh, the Buddha asked Mante uh, Do you know this guy? This person? He said, Yes, I know. Santa. Tonight he will become an Arahant. Immediately. This drunk man who is going to see a lady in the table. <laughs> yeah. And then they left. What happened that night was that he went to see the lady and then they had some time and then finally out of some issue, health issue, heart attack, she passed away uh, in front of him. So looking at what happened to what he really loved, what he was thinking, his thoughts, and how that everything faded, he was thinking about Anicca. Anicca was a flashback at that. So that that moment helped him to become an Arahant. Very interesting story. Now don't think you can drink and uh, become a woman. <laughs> you can attain Nibba. Different people attain Nibba in different ways. Don't, don't think there's a general way. <laughs> Santati way. So then what happened to Santati? Right condition did not come. His condition was clean. So there are many examples. Okay, your question. I have many questions, but I start with three. Yes, maybe maybe you can ask one question. Okay, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If there are other, no other people, so you can do a few other questions. Or more. Same, yeah, yeah. same. Sure, sure, sure. I understand. First thing is, is rebirth instant? Is rebirth instant? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say very, very instantaneous, even without an nanosecond. It has to be. It must be. It might be a pain cloud or a pain for Manusa, but it is instantaneous. There is no internet. Of course, the year death, the guy didn't come back. Yeah, now can we? Sorry. Are you going to professional death? Okay, yes. Oh, okay. What about the year? Sorry. Just related to this one. Yeah, what about like near death experience? Some people they die, then five minutes later they are they are revived. So if it was instantaneous, that means they were reborn somewhere, then they pull back. I don't think they die. Yeah. They are going to die. No, but the medically medically all they, gone. Yeah. Medically you can't define the death. That's another problem. How that is the medical uh, definition of the death? Flat let's, line. let's talk about it and then come back to this question. Brain dead and heart stopped. Huh? Brain dead and flat line. Flat line. Brain dead and stop. Stop. Brain dead. Brain dead. Brain dead. The brain is gone, but uh, the, the patient is uh, with the life support. The life support is removed. The person is living with the heart. And then, what are the other types of deaths? Ah, that, that is the conventional death. 
in Buddhism. Uh, the stoppage of the heart is the convention of death. Because the Abhidhamma they talk about Hadeva. Uh, in Suttas, early Suttas, Buddha last one talk about where is the mind. When the people asking, uh, asking uh, about where is the mind, Buddha said there is no place in the mind. You can't say this is the lake, this is the dream. Then Abhidhamma, they talk about a specific place about the uh, mind. They say, this is called Hadeva. What is this place called? Hadeva. They say our mind lies in a particular place in the body. In Abhidhamma things. Hade means heart. What to? Is our mind in the heart? Not exactly. They say our mind stays with the blood associated with the heart. Now when you have an open uh, surgery, bypass surgery, so then the heart is taken out. But they, are, they are should have certain, uh, what do you call? Blood that needs the heart taken out. So that means if there is no uh, flowing blood into the arteries, into the heart, that means definitely this person must die. This is, this is the Buddhist way of understanding the death. But then there are many other things. When someone passes away, eyes can uh, stay for some time, eyes are not dead, then whatever, tissues can be still be used for whatever. There are many things. So medically speaking, there is no particular uh, death according to the Buddhist ideas. Uh, they are talking different types of death. So near death experience is something that some people they feel, even some medical things might say. According to Buddhism, we don't believe that it is the uh, stoppage of the heart. Maybe a certain instant moment in that thing. But I have heard, I have seen some of the people who are saying, I want to go back to that place. Why? This this gives us another thing. That means the moment we are there, we are spiritually so much bombarded with information. We, that you are going to die, you are going to hell. But actually, if you have a natural death, the moment you are dying, it's a peaceful moment. Natural. That you don't have uh, any pain. That's why they say, I had some kind of ecstasy when I was dying. Uh, then uh, I go back to this life again. So it is not the death. It is that uh, what you call turning point between the life and the death. Yes. yes. Hi, Bante. But the um, problem is death is a problem to us if we have not practiced enough. We don't know where we are going to be reborn. That is the only problem. Otherwise, death is not the problem. It is a part of our life. We have to die. Nobody should tell us that uh, you are going to die, you have to do good problems. The problem is that we don't know where we are going to be reborn. There's no guarantee. I don't. Yes. Hi, Bante. Is it the last thought or is it our karma that determine where we are reborn? Okay. Thank you. Where we are going to be reborn uh, will be defined by the last thought. And how much longer you're going to be in that particular state of wealth is dependent upon your habitual good karma, habitual good or bad karma. Mm -hmm. Say, for instance, Malika's story. Yeah. You know Malika? Also Malika. So Malika is a very famous, one of the very, I think, the, the chief benefactors of the Buddha in addition to Vishaka. And uh, she shipped the bad karma and she lied to the king. What happened was that although she did the highest dana with the Buddha, she is the one who did the highest dana with the Shakya Muni Buddha. Mm -hmm. You may have read that story how she did that. She uh, brought uh, 500 elephants, mm -hmm. and elephants were uh, what you call holding umbrellas to each man. Then uh, she was short of one elephant to the Angul Mala, Arhan Angul Mala. So she somehow found out the baby elephant. Very interesting story. So she could do this dharma with 500 elephants. 
Would you do that kind of that? Elephants will uh, make and have it. Right? <laughs> if they, if they come. So what happened? Just before she passed away, that that thing, something she did gets back, it came to her mind. So it, she was reborn in hell for a week. So every time King Kosala came to Vihar, King Kosala, when uh, he was leaving the palace, he wanted to ask the question, where was uh, his mother country born? And then Buddha always make him forget. He's a normal person. <laughs> if he was told that Malika was born in hell, he would uh, be very bad about it. What have done? How come? What happened to her? <coughs> but after seven days, he did not make him forget. So the, uh, what we have to understand is, next life is defined by the last thought. And I believe this last thought is a flashback of the good karmas and many good karmas and many bad karmas we have been doing in that particular. And, uh, and then how you are going to survive in that life in the long run depends on a lot of good karmas, a lot of bad karmas you did in the past life. That's sutta for that. If you want to read this sutta, it is the best answer to this question. Mm -hmm. The sutta name is Maha Kama Vipanta Sutta. Maha Kama Vipanta Sutta. In this sutta, Buddha talks about four kinds of people who are passing away. He says, there is someone who has done good karmas and they're going to be reborn in a good place. This is the normal common place that we all know that. We don't have a problem with that. Second person is someone who has done bad karmas, going to be reborn in a bad place. This is also common. We know that. But the third, fourth are interesting. He says, there is someone who has done a lot of good karmas, but going to be reborn in a hell. It's a little bit concerned. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one, someone who has done a lot of bad karmas, going to be reborn in a good place. So these two variations can be understood. Why is it? There is a good person who has been doing a lot of good karmas, going to be reborn in a bad place because of the last moment. That person loses samadhi. Samadhi is what we need to have all the time. Wrong dhiti has come. Vichaditi has come to the mother pastor. But the problem is, the nice thing is that if that person won't stay in the bad place for a long time, maybe a week, month. Right? That's why we always say if you want to die peacefully, you should have a practice. That practice, during the practice, you will die somewhere. So you are okay. But if you, if you happen to listen to a Dharma talk, how to die mindfully? <laughs> I think you are thinking, Bhakti is talking about uh, a particular moment and how to die mindfully. <laughs> you can't die mindfully if you have not been practicing for a long time. Because mm -hmm. who knows when we're going to die? That's a layer question. Mm. And we can't do that. Actually, YouTube uh, uh, is going to remove those videos. Too. YouTube, they remove those videos. Why is it? These people are talking how to die early. <laughs> they are misunderstanding. Don't teach people because then somebody might learn how to die and die on the spot. Mm -hmm. If it is a very short strategy, <laughs> they are removing all the videos. They say we can't keep the video on the YouTube. It's a bad idea. So, the good idea to give to people is that you will die happy mm -hmm. and your next birth will be okay. If you have been having a practice for long term, somewhere in that practice you will die. You don't have to worry about X, Y, Z with the date, time, don't go to give your hand to somebody who can make palms, right? astrology. Just talk about these things. That is inevitable. It's a part of life. X, Y, Z about the death should not be mattering to us because we have to practice. And a bad person. A bad person is going to be reborn a good place because he had some maditi just before he passed. There are some people like that. <clears throat> but because that person has been a lot of bad karmas, that good life will be bothered. It happens. Sometimes there is someone who is becoming a human, but in a 
in a couple of years, that person will be disturbed by a certain disease, mm -hmm. certain uh, lifelong uh, disability issue. Right? These are all common things. Mm -hmm. They have certain things. So Mahakamivamsu is the answer to that question. So uh, the last thought will de define your life. Right? Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it because it's like a marathon. <laughs> In a marathon, you know that uh, there are a couple stages where people are waiting to take the baton, right? Let's say there's a very experienced runner in the last stage of the marathon. Right? But he is not get, picking up the baton in time. Can he finish the uh, finish line? He cannot. Why? It was not picked up in time. Even the bad uh, bad runners also can finish go to the finish line. In the same way, uh, our habitual karmas affect. That means we should have a practice in the long run. If you have another question. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that uh, when somebody sent you a message in a dream asking for things, that means they are lack of something. Is that right? Somebody sent a message or dream that they are lacking something like no clothes, no water. They are not very much expressing about what they want. It depends on different peta. Some petas cannot express, like some humans. Huh? Some humans cannot express their emotions well sometimes. Right? So, uh, some petas, most petas, they just appear and then they vanish, they descend. But some petas, they can say something. It depends. It depends on the quality of the papers. So if they appear, how do we know whether they are they need help or not? Naked. So if they don't appear, no dream, that means it's, it's good. Huh? If you don't dream about them, that means... What a good sleep is that? <laughs> so I always expect, you know, it's dreams. Each time when we dream, we are not sleeping. Yes. You think about asking anybody who had a dream, they haven't slept well. Yes. Oh. Go to sleep early and then uh, wake up early. Oh, or what about a pleasant dream, like as if the department was with you on a normal day, like a routine day? Is it because is that the mind playing tricks on you, yeah, or is it a dream? Play, play about the sanya that we have about the, uh, let's say, uh, let's say uh, someone's father passed away, but she is always thinking about the father, how she interacted, maybe. His birthday, randomly she is becoming emotional, he was just emotional, and all the events with the sanya popping up, and then he will be goes to sleep. And then what is happening is that uh, in a dream, father will appear. So we know why he appeared, because today I was thinking a lot about him. Right? But without thinking, you know that you didn't think about him. Appears, then you need to be good comments to so, so you cannot connect those dots. Why why was this appear the random? Must be only said. Uh yes. can I can I ask uh, regarding petas also? Uh if like example uh something to do with what he said, if uh those uh ghosts right they ask something like I don't know why, because you mentioned about clothing, it occurred to me, right? Why do they always ask about clothing? But then you talk about a person died straight away, either they, they are reborn into something, there's no in between, right? So consider that as reborn in the petas world. Is that the reborn you're talking about? And then another second question is when they ask for clothing, clothing uh, do, uh, they do, you mentioned doing dana to the monk, is uh, how do we? call relate with that with the ghost because we are actually uh, dana the rope to the monk how do they get the clothing for them do we have to say like i transfer the merits or something or do chinese you know chinese they have this belief that they burn a lot of the clothing because the the ghost asking for clothing they are very cold so it's something similar to what you say but in terms of giving rope to dana chinese will like very straightforward oh, okay i burn the thing straight away to the person so can you clarify in these two uh, i call it discrepancy right 
which one is actually the correct one and what how it correlate with giving the rope to the monk to give it to the the disease how it happens there are no discrepancies in your question <laughs> when you think about the characterization now the first question you asked was uh, if, if there is no interval between this life and the next life yeah. how come people become beta beta is the next life oh, okay. it is not the other religious traditions make it as a resurrection same person has not gone to the next life and is still living as a dead being in Buddhism Peta means the next life. They are already reborn, but as reborn as a Peta. Now we won't send them to the good place. That's what we do. And the next question you said uh, was, uh, uh, what do you call uh, Do Petas ask what, what should be done? What needs to be done? No, they don't, they don't know what to do. What they say is, they are suffering. They are letting you know they are suffering. You have to think about what to do for them. They say, say, we don't have this, we don't have this, maybe you see that they are suffering. None of these fetas never ask anybody to do something. Even in the Adhan Kottapata situation, uh, the brother Peta appeared said, I don't have clothes, uh, with, my, with your mother and father, no food, no water, uh, then uh, we cannot walk. They are all bringing up the suffering. Right? Uh, so we have to understand with our Dhamma knowledge, that's why we learn this. What to, what to be done. Uh, connecting to your Chinese culture, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> uh, it's a respected tradition, I'm not going to say all that. What I'm trying to say is that as a Buddhist person, we understand the Buddhist way in uh, caring these people, our beings who passed away. So uh, the Buddhist way is that uh, burning whatever the things will not give anybody good karma. Uh, it would reach those Vimana you're talking about, the, the petals in Vimana, they can, they can even bring things to. Do they receive things that we burn to them, or should we just do dharma instead of burning? You know, a lot of uh, Buddhists they say, oh, burn mm -hmm. all those things, it's worth of money, they won't receive anything. So, so that's what I'm saying. In Buddhism, we don't pass materials to anybody, we pass the good karmas. That's the difference between what you say and uh, what this is all about. In Buddhism, we cannot pass any material thing. Now you understand the answer. These people, according to Buddhism, they cannot get the food, they cannot uh, uh, consume them. What they need is good karmas. So then the more we purify our thoughts in giving dana, the more good karmas can go to them. Beautification is important. Now there are many people who might think I will do a very small dana because only the I can do a very small young give uh, small something to somebody and give dana. Yes, that can be done. But the most important thing is how do you improve your thoughts? Kusal thoughts. That is what we are passing on to the departed one, not the materials. So in different traditions, they believe that uh, we can communicate with the materials. It is not the uh, way how we are thinking in Buddhism. Yeah. Okay. So these are two things. So you have to separate out. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Bhante, for giving us this uh, Dharma talk. Um, what makes me come to this uh, talk tonight is that you say, can loved ones communicate with us after they have passed away? So what happened is my father passed away um, October last year. He was 98. And uh, within seven days, uh, it never happened to us before. Um, in Chinese tradition is that uh, within that seven days, what we know is that they are still around. So on the seventh day, um, my siblings and myself went back to the, uh, where my father used to pass away, uh, I mean stays. And what happened is that instead of, uh, there was a nice butterfly this big, it's green in color, um, did not come to my father's house, went to my house early in the morning about six plus before sunrise. And my wife managed to capture the picture and 
also in the CCTV at the porch. So my question is, is that butterfly representing my father? Because in Chinese traditions, we know that they come with in moth, butterflies or even birds. So what is your opinion on this sort of uh, Chinese uh, culture? Whether they represent, when they, when, when they depart, you say it's an instant rebirth. But is there a grace period, you know, quoted, where they still have time in this world, but within that seven days, they are, they are told to go somewhere else. Um, what's your opinion? I, I won't say it's right or wrong, but this is what happened. We never see this. When I researched that, that particular um, uh, butterfly or the moth, it doesn't, doesn't, uh, it's not common at all in Malaysia. So that really uh, amazes. Uh. How old can a butterfly last? I took, maybe, I don't know, biology, I'm not so sure. You have to search that first. Okay. <laughs> because we are trying to connect uh, the dots over here. You know? Sorry? Yes. The dots. The, the okay, dots okay, all right, all right. Trying to make them understand. Okay. I will tell you something from the Buddhist text. There was a monk who passed away. There was a monk who passed away. Yeah. And then other monks were trying to not cremate him. At that time, there were no coffee. Huh? They just tried to wrap him up. The Buddha said, don't cremate him. That's why he is coming to the rock as a moth very soon. Huh? So he likes the rock a lot. Now he is coming as a moth into the rock. If you remain, moth will be died too. So this is a different way of looking at it. But I think for a father, you don't try to connect these small dots. That is my thinking. Uh, because uh, we can. Because there are a lot of things happening in this nature. Right? So let's put him in a higher place. Uh, put him in a higher place, in a higher phenomenon. Uh, so, uh, sometimes when uh, somebody passed away, even when they are living also, there are certain things can happen. Uh, so my answer is that uh, it can happen. It may happen, it may not happen. But the way how we need to look at these kind of things is that uh, we have we should not uh, connect our departed ones into animals in the first place. So why we don't do that? We know that becoming an animal is such a pain. This we call him butterfly. What will happen to his next life? We don't have. Maybe it happened a different way, but you can connect it. Maybe for a different purpose. So, uh, try to uh, keep your father in a higher place. He, uh, I hope that he must have done good karma and uh, he must have died and re uh, must have been reborn in a better place. Why don't you bring that thought over this butterfly story? We can relate, but better to keep our departed ones in a higher place and do our good karma. No doubt. Thanks. That is the way and how I because we don't know. If we don't know, why do you want to take the lower way of understanding that example? Ah, uh, Bante, yes. sorry. I want to ask about why we want to share to Deva uh, that time the question, but uh, we haven't get an answer. Okay. All right. Why do you want to share our Uttanas with the Devas and the Devas only tell Uttanas? That is how it has to be. Why do you, at the end of the Uttanas, uh, we are supposed to share the good karmas. Why? Otherwise, we will take good karmas as a selfish practice. It is my life, my own spiritual journey. That is why we are going to share it. Departed ones definitely they need, but for the devas, uh, they they don't need our good karmas because they are reborn as devas. So they must have a lot of good karmas uh, to break that uh, selfishness which can happen even for the good karmas. Uh, now say for instance the meditation. I think I gave a talk about it last day. Uh, in the Satipatta Sutta, Buddha says, when you practice any meditation, anapa, breath meditation, uh, walking meditation, 
whatever the meditations that come under the four satipatthanas. At the end of the meditation, you have to think something interesting. Let's take anapam sati, breath meditation. Now you are, what you are supposed to do in the anapam sati meditation, you are watching your own breaths, different variations of the breaths. Then the Buddha knew when people do this meditation by watching one's own breaths, there is a, a far more susceptibility that the person might come up with a selfish thought. I only watch my own breaths. Because of that, now I am becoming calm. So he said at the end of uh, each exercise, you have to, uh, what do you call, practice breath meditation internally and externally. Ajatta Bhavitta. This one we know. This one we understand. We internally we watch our breath. But what is externally? Does it mean that when we are we, uh, watching our breath, do I, do I have to focus on the next person, how he is breathing, she is breathing? That is very weird. What he meant by externally is, I have to think, just as how I watch my breath, because I am breathing. Other people are also, all sentient beings are also breathing at the same time. Then I am going to universalize my practice. Thereby, I am cutting down on my selfishness. Selfishness is cut off at that point. It is the same thing that we do by giving good karmas to the Deva. Not even to the Deva, all the living beings. Now sometimes, I think quite often, what is the purpose of taking a photo of your dana, <laughs> rice bowl, and then uh, what do you call these fruits, and then posting on social media? Do you think that your dana will not get enough good karmas if you don't post on social media? Yes. I think you are making people happy, that you are making people rejoice too, you know. That is how we look at it. So, not even the day was, we are even, maybe we are calling someone, I gave a dana today, I was thinking about you, your good health, I know you are going through a hard time. So, we are trying to universalize that, so that we are going to cut down on the identity. that's the better word. That means, uh, this self-identity. That is why we are giving good karma today. Otherwise, devas don't need good karma. Yeah. They have done good karma, that's why they are in a better place than us. Good evening, Bhante. Uh, come back to the, uh, the moment of the last talk before that. So, how can we help people or help ourselves that has dementia or, or you know Alzheimer or to those sick people who at the last moment they are unconscious they are, they are breathing in and out but but they are already are not connecting with us thank okay. you what is uh, dementia think about dementia you understand that there is an inflammation uh, in the neurochemical so when someone's neurochemicals are inflamed, then that person is having a cognitive dysfunction. But we are not talking about this person's cognitive dysfunction in regard to uh, spiritual life. We know this person must have had a practice before being psychological dysfunction. Right? So that's why here, uh, even someone's uh, brain is dead, the doctors are asking, you can talk to him. Just talk to him, we can hear. She can hear, but he or she will not respond to you. That's a different uh, scenario. So, we can help anybody who has uh, that kind of psychological issue at that point, uh, cognitive issue, uh, by thinking. We, we, we may not be able to do much because now they are not able to communicate us properly. But what we have to understand about their status of next life is that uh, before they coming to that issue, uh, they would have had this particular good mentality. So, uh, in, some, in that particular life, they have done enough good karma. So, they, those good karmas will help them. So, we don't have to worry about it. Uh, 
we are thinking that okay now let's say someone is having dementia now living for seven years always uh, talking nonsense and uh, that kind of thing we don't have to worry because he is not in a good mindset good mind so that doesn't count the bad karma because karma is intentional activities right now his cognitive part has been uh, uh, you know bypassed by the issue so whatever he does he does is not making good karma Let's say someone is having a very big stick and trying to be somebody. Then the doctors uh, diagnose him to be a mentally sick person. Uh, in the penal court, he has immunity, isn't it? He has immunity because law understands. The penal court understands when someone is psychologically not good. That means whatever he or she does is not countable for you. Same applies to the government. This person does without a uh, proper mind. So no karma. No good karma, no bad karma. It's kind of a defunct, defunct karma, defunct status. So, uh, if you are really concerned about that family member who has dementia, don't worry about it. We think that person must have had a good practice before going to this issue. Those good karmas will help him to uh, transition to a next life. Since I'm holding the mic, since I'm holding the mic, I have the power. <laughs> um, Bante, just so when in the first first message that you wrote, is this everyone die become a better? Everyone die. Everyone die. Uh, the, the being who passed away become a better, right? Ah, you define that, that as better. Everyone, everyone, die. we all die. Uh, when we die, other people call us. Better. Okay. Not that we are yeah. <laughs> this, this is a discrimination. Yeah. I tell you, <laughs> because they have no other word to call us. We all are painters. So, is this, is this a conventional term, sir? It's just a conventional term. Yeah. Okay. So, when. There are two, two paper stages, what we understand. One paper says it is common uh, use of uh, parliament called paper to anyone. Even if you go to give a dana, uh, the monks call, uh, what do you call it? How do they call it? Uh, beta. They say now, betas, your are uh, a beta, and we are going to give karmas to the betas. Ayancha Kuta Kina Dinma, Sangam Sukhati Kuta, Digaratan Kayas, they say by calling him a beta. But that beta is not saying that you became a beta as a dead person, you passed away from it as a common usage for everybody who passed away. But the beta status on the second layer, it is concerning. That means you became a real data. That is what we were talking about. Yeah, just because I thought um, if they become a beta and someone become a human beings, so he had to be a beta for nine months. Yeah, exactly. so that's so that's the they, don't, they don't know where what happened. Yeah. So they call me one of the There's a yeah. okay. So we have another Evening, Bhante. Uh, I would like to know, uh, you did mention about uh, this petas unable to entering, unable to enter the steps of the person's house. Unable to enter the house. Why is it so? Because I think uh, what my experience was uh, when my brother was okay. Who can give us good karma? I'll give my to them. 
Thank you. Uh, Bante, you mentioned uh, spirit, but you know I couldn't really connect. Did I the, the I yeah. thought I hear what that. <laughs> but then, is there a, a difference, spirit and peta? Well, uh, spirit can be a, a subcategory of peta, but we only call spirits those things who are invisible, who are traveling here and there. Yeah. But I would like to uh, pick up the Pali word peta. Uh, okay. You can say walk properly, you know, those, those <laughs> undefined beings in English. Yes. Yeah. So we could say uh, peta, P E T A. Okay. Someone who really wants to travel and they can approach us. Okay. Thing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, this gentleman. Yeah. Uh, good evening. I think earlier you mentioned, uh, I think it's related to men of culture. Why is it that some people can feel, can see, or, or, can, or whatever, yeah. and then why some don't? So, is it Very you don't easy. see, is it positive, or is it you see, is it negative? Very easy to distinguish. That means you haven't seen any such. Which so is? So all the beings are going to the good things. Oh, so it's a positive that's thing. That's so if, if you don't see, you don't yeah, feel, mean they don't actually come to you. La. Oh. They don't need to come. Thank so you. Now it doesn't mean those who have seen them, they are bad people, right? Yeah, because <laughs> they need help. Yes, but yes, so you are good and you don't really Oh, is it only your relatives and do people that are known to you actually comes for assistance? Unknown means sansara. Sansara, we may have mother, father, grandmother, father. They come. Oh, those. Yeah, no oh. They may. They may. Like but not strangers. Actually, we don't have strangers. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. 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 <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah, yeah, shouldn't be in the vocabulary. Thank you, thank you, Bante. Bante, um, for those beta you mentioned, um, if it is the house is uh, resided by people who are keeping the five preset. They usually won't enter, right? If the people who are in the household, maybe uh, what you call spiritual, uh, they cannot enter. Now, now the idea is why they. This is a question. Uh, maybe to impress someone to say the dire need of the good karma. They are desperate about the good karma. Maybe they need urgent good karma. If they don't need urgent good karmas, they may appear in a dream, giving you some grace <laughs> people. <laughs> okay, so, and you know, yeah. what about those empty houses? Like empty houses, sometimes people say um, it is easier to be occupied mm -hmm. by some unseen living. So, um, is, is it true that uh, empty houses not occupied, is uh, the beta can enter? I think uh, that kind of a situation is not relevant to a paper. Papers normally come to uh, people to witness good karmas. Those kinds of beings are maybe yakras. Yakras, maybe uh, some other beings, kumbhandas, pisachas. There's a sort of uh, species called pisachas, flesh eating beings. So these are different types of invisible beings. So they are the ones who might go to these places, and not the painters. Painters are really wanting good karmas, they want it, they go. Those are the things. Actually, when the house is closed, nobody is living for many years there. You know, animals think that they want to live in this house. Every ant who goes inside the house thinks, this is my house. Same thing applies to invisible beings. That's why we have a belief that every room in the house has should be open every day. Do something. Not leaving uh, empty, right? Uh, they are. They shouldn't be painters. Painters don't need to move. The painters cannot occupy them. Painters come to uh, humans to ask good comments. 
So, so if a house is being left for too long, and we also won't know whether is there any other living, what would be the best way that to uh, respect uh, whatever unseen living? Well, I think uh, there are conditions that can happen to people. They cannot uh, uh, do the house for renting time. Right? They don't have a plan to do with that particular empty house. So I think uh, a good thing is to discuss earlier before the house is going to be vacant. And then you need to uh, use it for a purpose without letting it be. Uh, that is people's, uh, uh, what you call, uh, indecisiveness about it. What is to be happening in that household. Right? And then what happens? They don't cut the grass, they don't uh, sweep the floor, and it's going to be a really haunted place at that point. You are making the place, inviting unseen beings to come and hey, occupy. We are very indecisive. So I think it's, it's, it's lack of uh, decision making before something happens financially as well. So that means those unseen. Uh being is like uh, Bante mentioned, like what yaka ghost kind of category. They should no, they are ghosts. Uh, ghost, the English word ghost should be beta. Uh, they, you go by Pali words actually. They should be other beings, other uh, evil beings. They could be like Kumbandas, Pisachas, Gaudas. There are many other miscellaneous uh, invisible beings. That's a different another talk. Let's leave all that for another talk. <laughs> One talk, evil beings. Yakas. Can we send good karma to them and ask them to leave if there is any? Or even if we don't know, we just do some... They are not karma Thank you, Bhante. Yeah. Instead of Peta 8, Bhante, can we end up being Yakas and all these things? Besides being Petas? And we end up as a Yakas? Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All is possible. So we can actually end up. Okay. If you want. <laughs> so, Oh, because all the time you're talking about petas, the four. Yeah. No, because all the talks are always on the four lower ram. They don't talk about. All this. Uh, perish, 
say it and that's the confirmation. It's confirmed. The Buddha says Vatana Sutta. How many things say? Sakuri, Apa Ayahi Dhu. Oh, then you become a Sutta. You are free from all the two Apa. Alright, so let me take the. Okay, I want to touch on the rebirth again uh, because just now Bante mentioned that it's actually instant, immediate, right? But I think there is, uh, there is no lapse. There is no lapse. No lapse. But what about these 49 days that people That's have been talking? Uh, Tibetan oh, Tibetan. Tibetan. Okay. So for Theravadian is. Not yes. by, it's also school. I say early Buddhism. Oh, early and Buddhism. And make sure that we are talking early Buddhism. All mm. these schools came after early Buddhism. I see. Don't okay. uh, limit your understanding to Theravada. Theravada is a certain school. Okay. Abhidhamma is their mission. So we are talking early Buddhism. Early Buddhism means Dita, Matthima, Sangyutta, Anguttara. These four places. Mm. And the rest of the uh, texts, they came after. Theravada's effort. I see. Okay, got it. Thank you. There is no lapse. It's like a, it's like a grand case. People are saying these cars are running very fast. No? We can't see them. We can't see these cars in a grand case. But somebody is going to take a picture of these cars. And the car is in the picture. What happens? Maybe in a small, minute fraction, the car exists in the time. Isn't it? Car exists. But in our own version, we cannot see. That's why I say there's no lapse going to do such, such short nanosecond. Maybe even a fraction of nanosecond. Very, very small. Okay. Maybe we take the one last question. And we'll... Yes. Thank you, Bhante. Bhante, just now you mentioned that the petas will come to us asking for things. Uh, it Usually, if, if your pet, if your uh, relatives, loved ones uh, will be born in a, uh, one of the petas, the first three petas, they really want to come, then they may come to you. Okay. Actually, let's say you have a couple of siblings, maybe they will approach the weakest sibling mm. in the first place. They cannot know. Somebody ask a question to you. Yeah. How they uh, decide the approach? Okay. They decide the weakest person first. Okay. Mentally weak person. Okay. They cannot approach a strong, spiritually strong person. They know the mind is very strong. What What if What if the peta come, the, the relative comes to us, and says very good things and say that I'm actually a very good place. Please don't worry about me. You know I'm fine now. So do we believe that or? Are you talking by experience or yes. is it imagining? Okay. Yes. Uh, we haven't. Uh, okay. Now, uh, what do you call in the Arahan Portapada's example? The brother Peta, mm. when he is coming back, he's always saying, Thank Asking. you for the, yeah. thank you for the <coughs> ah, what do you call things, food, thank yeah. you for the what footwear. Call, <laughs> so there is a certain confirmation, acknowledgement from the Peta. Right. Yeah. No, so mm. it can happen. Okay. It can. Okay, so so we believe that too, right? Are not easy to be <laughs> Maybe Deva already. Maybe Deva. I don't know because uh, it can uh, be a Deva. It's, yeah, because because at that point. Yeah, because the dream I got was, don't worry, I'm very good now. Yeah. Yeah. You are such a lucky, one of the luckiest person. That Thank if you. If your relatives are saying yes, nobody they are asking, asking, asking. Mm. Yes. I got a good one. Thank you. <laughs> all right, you, you ask all your three questions. Actually, uh -huh. <laughs> got some more now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, fine, final one. Uh, I attend this talk because it's very interesting, and I think I am a, a bit long. I think most of us Chinese, in my opinion, we are born confused. We have Taoism, Buddhism, Confucianism, and whatever, and we become confused. So. When I was young, oh, we, we follow what grandpa said, grandma said, and grandfather said. And after learning, listening to some talks, I decided not to, when I pray to the ancestors, the ancestors tablet at the altar, I used to ask for blessings. 
Then later I thought, if I keep asking for blessings, they got no chance to go and have a rebirth. Right? So after that, I stopped. And when I pray at the ancestor now, I just say, um, ancestors, I don't mention specifically anybody. Because some of them may not have been, uh, they're still petas maybe. So I, that is, that's my approach. I've changed my approach. And uh, I ask a bit more because uh, my wife passed away two years ago. And um, I never had any dreams of her. And I asked some pantes, they said, no dreams mean good news. So I just want to confirm that. Yeah. And recently, I had two dreams about her. It's about her at home on a normal day. We were, uh, we were dressed, ready to go out for lunch or for dinner. So I was wondering whether those are just dreams or they were just tr tricks on my recollection. It could be the both. Yeah. Thank but you. Something interesting. I don't know why people are expecting blessings from the base. Exactly. Exactly. How come you're getting blessings? You have to make, you have to create your own blessings under the Mangala Sutra. Because we're confused. So now so, yeah, I, don't, so I don't. My suggestion at that point is uh, do your Chinese practices in the Buddhist way. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do now. Do, don't stop those practices. Do them in the Buddhist way. You can do it. And say, so, uh, Jim maintain. It's a good idea, is true. Make it Buddhist. So close the bad, bad thoughts of that idea, you know. There are people who are having it in different ways, like burning stuff. Do it in the Buddhist state because we believe that they need good karmas. If it is another uh, event, do it in the Buddhist. State. You are giving your culture, you are bringing the Buddhism. Not that all these are really confused, absurd practices. We have to find out what is the best by tomorrow morning. <laughs> this kind of attitude might not help you. That will create a lot of Buddha. So, uh, blessings must be created in our life in the Mangal Sutta. You can get the business from Mansa. Yeah. You can share or Yeah, make it Buddhist. Yeah. Yeah. That is the thing we can do. Alright, I think that's all I can do. Thank you, Bhante, for the very uh, <coughs> very inspiration <coughs> very enlightening sharing. Very, uh, let us all give three bows to Bhante. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. If anyone wishes to offer a Navakama to Bhante, there's some Ampau wrappers at the back, you can just put it there and offer to Bhante. Yeah. And then uh, Bhante in sharing marriage. Uh, thank you, Brother Adi, and thank you, Brother Chisek. You just came from Sri Lanka. Uh, good to see you. Uh, BGF is not a uh, new place to me, and I think that nothing there would be. Even having to Canada time, I will bring it. So the discussion which we finished uh, yesterday. And uh, happy to see all of you. And I hope that you learn something new about this subject. Uh, dispelling uh, your probably stereotype understanding about uh, this aspect, about uh, very transparent, about how to communicate. Communication with the department ones is not just talking to them, it is just uh, helping them wherever they want to be. If, they, if you don't read, good sign, that's good, you can sleep well, you can do all the things. So think, uh, think about all these good aspects, not uh, become uh, scared about these things. They can't do anything wrong to you. If you are really a good person, then they need only good things. Right? Sometimes when we are not good, other people are troubling us a lot. But when we are thriving, growing well, other people won't have a support. This is happening in a moment, like money and all that thing. It's the same thing that applies to this uh, department. So, uh, may all the good comments which uh, we've been making today by learning about this subject uh, be transferred to all the departed ones. And we are doing the same thing to the whole purpose of the talk. May all the departed ones receive all these good comments. May they be well and happy. If they were reborn in a place of uh, unhappiness, pain, may they be able to overcome suffering uh, do come and they will be able to be reborn in a better place. If they are already in a better place, a good world they will be able to improve uh, the conditions of that life and finally attain the supreme bliss of the world. 